Uh, yes, I've got a complicated name, and some people call me Mrs. Mimo because <laughs> I'm from the Mimo group. I'm one of the founders. Well, Mrs. Mimo is sort of a funny name, sounds like a character of a Walt Disney movie. <laughs> but actually, what I'll be speaking about is very serious. <laughs> so I'll be speaking about French software in the French government administration. So using free software in French state administration is a long history. I wrote that we'll be using free software since 2000. Actually, that's a symbolic date. We used it beforehand. It's just that it has been a long time since we began using it. And the most common used are for servers on operating systems. Many servers are on Linux, on databases, for example, PostgreSQL, uh, excuse you know what I mean. On desktops, of course, browser, mail client, and Office Suite. As for Office Suite, today we have switched from openoffice.org to LibreOffice, which doesn't mean that it's the only one. LibreOffice is installed of most of our desktops. We have around 500,000 desktops. And LibreOffice is installed almost everywhere now, but often it's not the only one. Well, you can guess what is the, only one, the other one. <laughs> so we hope that day after day, there will be only one. Ours, LibreOffice. In 2012, there was an event in France that was a decision from our prime minister. You have a link there. It was a, a circular decision, a text, uh, for the public state administrations. And it was not an extraction mandatory. It was more like a guide of good practice. It was more like an advice, a set of advice. The idea was to explain how you have to use free software. What is the good practice of using free software for the French state administrations? So the note explained that you have to examine, to consider free and proprietary softwares on the same level, which was not the case. You don't have to say, well, free software, that's something not serious, I'm not considering it. You have to consider both. Also, you have to choose to define the cases when the use of free software is suitable. You don't have to use free software everywhere. There are some cases where it's a good solution. So the note explained a few cases. One of them I wrote down. It's when a proprietary software is monopolistic and you have another solution which is suitable to your needs. This happens, for example, with the database. It happens more or less, not totally, for the desktop operating system. It certainly happens for Office Suite. You have a monopolistic solution and you have an alternative free solution. So the note says that in those cases, in those good cases, you have to select the same free software in all state administrations. Why? To ensure interoperability of documents, to help sharing resources, skills, documentations, etc. And when you have selected softwares, you have to concentrate on those selected softwares. You have to contribute to them and to keep good relationships with their communities. 
That's just what I'm doing today. How is it managed? With working groups. So it's not just a note published and nothing, less, nothing more. It needs an effort, so it needs people who work for it. So there are working groups which are created. There is a core team of IT deciders, executives, from most French ministries, and this core team is controlled by something which is called the DISIC, which sort of acts like the CIO of the French state. And under it, there are five groups of IT engineers, which are skilled experts in several fields. So you find again MIMO, which is concerned with the desktop and other groups as well concerned with other parts of the IT infrastructure. Those groups are in charge with the core team, are in charge of organizing the use of free software in the ministries. They share their experience together, they share, of course, their resources, and they create common resources. And they select the free software. When I said you have to select the same one, those groups are selecting the softwares. So again, MIMO, you have the logo there, uh, which means Mutualisation Interministerielle pour une bureautique ouverte. Or in English, uh, you have sort of a tra <laughs> translation, I'm not sure it's perfect. <laughs> so in this group, most ministries are represented and also other public administrations. It was created a long time ago, 2005. As I said, I was among the founders. So at that time, it was about openoffice.org. In fact, the, we changed the name of the group because of that. Why did we create this group? Well, I have news for you. It's hard to migrate to free software. It's very hard. You feel lonely. You have all kinds of problems. People are complaining. You have the macros in Excel. You have documents which were made with people who don't know how to use Office Suite. So they make documents which are, uh, they don't know what style is. So the document is completely, uh, it's a total mess, and I'm polite. And of course, LibreOffice or OpenOffice.org can't open it properly. And whose fault is it? Yours. So you feel lonely. So you need to share with other people who are lonely in their own ministry. That's why we, ch we created the group, to replace the feeling of loneliness by a feeling of solidarity. So we were exchanging all miseries. Afterwards, we, ex we shared our experience, then our resources, then we created common resources together. And we began to be a real working group. And all uh, I CIO were just letting us meet together. They just allowed the meetings. But we gained support from the CIO of the Ministry of Culture. And step by step, we, we convinced uh, the, the executives that free software was a solution. And so we obtained the signature of the prime minister on the decision. And we obtained the creation of all those working groups. All those working groups I spoke about were created by imitation of Mimo. It was a 
copy and paste process. And it's working. So what happens in 2011 was that we switched from openoffice.org to LibreOffice. It took us a year of discussion, of thinking, of comparison, and eventually we choose LibreOffice. And now, every year, we approve a LibreOffice version to be in the set of selected softwares. Why every year? Because we are large organizations. We can change our softwares too often. We change our desktop softwares once a year at most. And we can't be doing that more often. And in 2013, we are, didn't limit ourselves to uh, Office Suite, and we are enlarging to the whole desktop. And we're a member of the advisory board of TDF since 2013. So I spoke of selected softwares. That's what we call the seal. Interministry set of free software, socle interministériel de logiciel libre. This is, in fact, a list of softwares and the associated formats, which are based on standards. And it exists since 2012. Just after the decision of the Prime Minister, we issued this set of standards. It's online. You have the link. <clears throat> the French public administration advised to use them. It's not mandatory. Free software is not mandatory. It's just recommended. Uh, this set, this seal, includes only free softwares. And today, there are 150 softwares and extensions. And it's updated every year. The rule is, for each functionality, there is one software in one version. And for Office Suite, the software is, of course, LibreOffice. The format is OETF. And for the SEAL 2014, it's version 4.1. And for 2015, we'll be discussing it next week. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yet, that's how it looks. It's just a table, nothing more. Here you have the functionality, here the software, here the, that's recommended, the license, the format, and for Windows or Linux, which version? Nothing more, just simple. For the desktop, we went a bit further. The part of the seal about the desktop, the group memo make it available not just as a list, like you saw before, but also like with a pack ready to use. It's an ISO image. You can burn a DVD with it. It's online. Well, we created it for the, the administrations. And we said, how will we do to make it available to all French state administrations, all of them, and all of them, only them? Well, we couldn't. It's too complicated. So we said, OK, we'll make it available to everyone. But we made it for all needs. So you can use it if you want. But we certainly won't give you any kind of uh, guarantee of support or whatever. It's just made for our needs. We are not collaborators. <laughs> well, what's inside? All the softwares, of course, and related resources. So you have documentation, you have gallery, you have fonts, etc. For example, you have the, uh, the image of the uh, signs the, on the roads, 
to be used. Uh, that's one of our ministries who uses those image because uh, it needs for its job. There are all sorts of things. There are also um, cards, maps, sorry, for geography lessons, any kind of stuff which are needed in all ministries. Also, you have a descriptive page for each software. As for support, how do we do it? Well, we have two contracts. One is just for the Ministry of Finance where I work. That's since 2005. And there's another for all the other ministries which uh, began later. As far as all contract, it supports 2,060 softwares, free softwares, including LibreOffice. There's only one firm which gives us support on all those free softwares. There's only one point of entry. We add them. We have a problem. We don't know if it's the operating system or the database or whatever. Solve it. And they have to do it. And there's a delay. So in the staff of the contractors of this country, there are liberal office certified developers. So they make the link between us, users, and the community. What's in the contract help, of course, to use it, and correction of bugs. What do we with the patches? We applied the patches to all version of LibreOffice included in the SIL, MIMO. And of course, we submit them to the community to, uh, a as a contribution to LibreOffice. So. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.